Um, Brian Kerr is standing by. Evening, Brian. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well. That's a heck of an achievement for Dundalk. Yes, yeah. Um, you know, look, it, it has to be said, Nathan, they got the, the handy side of the draw all round. If you were to, to believe in advance that you could get through by beating the team from Andorra, Moldova and the Faroes to get through to the group stages, you'd say... That is very unlikely to happen and mm. work out that way. But you know, it's 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 still an excellent achievement for an Irish team to get through the group stages, and we should all celebrate that. I I'd be I'd be blunt about it now, Nathan. I wouldn't fancy Dundalk's chances of getting many points in the group based on what I saw tonight. Yeah. Let's hold off on that one for a moment because I think there, that, that is the next level we'll start thinking about tomorrow's draw and actually where are Dundalk really compared to the last two, three years to go and acquit themselves to the best of their ability, as you say, in these huge games that are coming down the track. On tonight's games then, on tonight's game, K.I. Klasvik got themselves back into it in the second half. Were Dundalk a far superior side? I didn't think they were far superior. I, I thought it took Dundalk 25 minutes to get going in the match. I thought they made it, they made it into a, a bit of a rough and tumble match, Nathan, in the in the early the first quarter of the game. They failed to get the ball down and play with any real constructive pattern of play. I, I didn't think Greg Slog had gotten the ball. I thought they got Chris Shields was badly missed and I, I didn't see Sean Murray in the match until he scored the goal, the headed goal there wasn't enough of Patrick McElhenney on the ball, the full backs didn't involve themselves in the play now maybe they were having a look at, the, at Cowie, as we called him when I was in the fair, it was Cowie Clagsfield they were having a look at them and they were sitting off and waiting but I, I, I thought it took them a long time to start showing a real bit of control and a pattern of play that they began to look like they, they were uh, they were better than the Pharaohs team and then they had a spell just leading up to the goal for a couple of minutes where they moved the ball around much better and they passed it and they shifted it from side to side and eventually uh, Sean Howard's ball into the box um, Patrick Hogan got an excellent header, he did well to hold Aldmar Farrow off nod the ball down and Murray got in had the goalkeeper Joensen. The goalkeepers all been the problem in the Faroes. So I had contact from someone from the dock asked me this week what did I think of the uh, of Plaxvik, and I said, well, the goalkeeper will be a problem if you put him under pressure. And I was proved right. I th mm. that their goalkeeper was dreadful, but you know, then the dock took a bit of control and they got a hold of it early in the second half to get a to get another. Look, it, it was it was a fortunate enough goal. It, the goalkeeper comes out with a corner, and misses his punch, doesn't get to it, and it breaks the clear. He sticks her in the net. Then they sat on the lid, which is fair enough in European football. They sat on it a little bit, but didn't sit on it with any great control. And they got away with a few things. Then they can see the goal. It does helter skelter for a few minutes, and Daniel Kelly gets on to McMillan's pass on the counter attack and took his goal very very well. But then there's still a lot of helter-skelter stuff near the end of the game. I just didn't think it was a very convincing performance. I thought it was way, way um, short of the, the, the control that the dog showed a few years back when the midfield was uh, Stevie O'Donnell, Robbie Benson and Chris Shields and Dane Massey uh, and uh, Gannon as the full-back. Uh, Daryl Horgan out in the left, Mountney on the right. And uh, Macmillan through the middle. I thought it was it was much more controlled performances. Maybe we'll see that in the group stages, but I, I thought it was a patchy performance. They did enough to win the game, but um, you know the opposition weren't any great shapes. They were very direct. Played off the big man up front, the big Norwegian lad Mitskogen, who who played well in the game and gave them gave them a lot of trouble. Mm. As you say, Andorra, Moldova, and then the Faroe Islands. And they sort of scraped through all three of them in the end without being hugely impressive. And Filippo Giovagnoli has come into a, a difficult situation. There's obviously a lot going on off the pitch in Dundalk. And there was a lot going on on it this season as well. They were nowhere near where they've been over the last couple of years. They decide to change manager. He has the connections. He's done nothing wrong, but he finds himself managing a, a senior team for the first time. Was there anything you saw tonight or over the last couple of European matches that that he's doing differently, that a style of play that he's bringing in then is different to what 
Vinnie Perth was doing for the last 18 months? Well, I, I, I didn't see anything dramatic. I mean, I, 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 I could be at that. I, I saw um, the, the game in Andorra, I only saw bits and scraps of that. And it looked like Andro the, that Dundalk had good control in that match. Mm. I think Celci, the Slovenian team, were a better better quality altogether. And Dundalk, the, 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 it was the errors at the back that cost them. Gary Rogers and Ryan Gartland's mix up early in the match, uh, or in the first half, caused the first goal. And then late on, there were more defensive mix up, but they they were they were of a slightly better quality. I would have said. I see it dramatically different. No, I, I I can't say I did. But remember, this squad of players was put together. I would say by League of Ireland standards, quite expensively, with the idea that there was pressure on to get through group rounds or sorry qualifying rounds in the Champions League or group stages in the Europa League. That's why. As I understand it, that's why Peach Six bought into Dundalk. Mm. They bought Dundalk in order to. They felt that they, it would be it would be a lot of income from European football on a regular basis in the group stages. Um, and now now they're there, and now they they will have that income. And when that income comes, I would be very interested to see do they invest in the facilities of a stadium in Dundalk or improve that the stadium stadium to some degree that stadium in the dark and Oriel park is an embarrassment at the moment in terms of even at league of ireland level it, it's it, it's it's dreadful really mm. and given that they've been so successful over so many years the fact that it, it hasn't improved at all is 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 fairly it's i wouldn't say it's scandalous but it, it's very poor nathan and and really these people who are, are in charge of the dock now need to take a grip, tell the supporters where they're going, what the future is for the stadium or development of the stadium or something, because those facilities are an embarrassment compared to the stadiums we see around Europe, even in the smaller countries around Europe. Um, even you, you see the stadium that the team played in Andorra is actually a better stadium. But um, so, you know, th these are things for the dock for the future. Now there'll be money in the bank or there will be money coming into the bank and there will be an opportunity there for them to do it. But the, the squad that they had, they, they built a squad that was um, with the intention of not just, you know, m winning the League of Ireland again, which I, they're obviously not going to now this year, but, but, but competing well in Europe. And they've got there by, like by fortunate means, I'd say, to end up getting the Pharaohs team in the playoff stage. When you look across the fixtures in Europe tonight, it, I would say they were the two lowest teams in the in the coefficient, yeah. and also, the, I, I, and I would also say Nathan, the quality in the football, the quality of the football in the first half of the match matched that. And I, if that's harsh, I I'm prepared to stick with that opinion. I thought it was it was fairly um, ah, rough and tumble. I'd say stuff a lot of the first half until just the Florida spell when the dog scored a goal. Here and listen, you're more than entitled to that opinion. It's interesting your comments about the stadium because, like, a victory like this, you can never just savour it for what it is for Dundalk. It's what does it mean for Irish football? What does it mean for the League of Ireland? And I know in the middle of COVID, when we're talking about money coming into Irish football and questions are asked about where Dundalk spent their money, they would say, well, they've done a lot behind the scenes in terms of. Uh, due gym equipment and treating their players better and that they haven't been handed a stadium by the council like certain other clubs may be is the way Dundalk would look at it. But would you have a concern now that actually they go and spend this and is that a concern or actually would that be beneficial for the league as well if they spend a good chunk of this money on, on players from inside and outside the league and bring the standard up or actually is the best thing for the League of Ireland that Dundalk invest this in facilities? I think, I think they need to get a balance on that. They need to have a plan. They need to decide on action plan in combination with the local, with the council, and, and with, with Dundalk. I, I, I don't see... Uh, I see every reason why Dundalk should get a good chunk of money from, from uh, state resources, from government funds, or local authority funds. I, they brought a lot of joy and a lot of credibility to the town. Um, over over the last number of years to play some great football and brought some great nights um to anyone in the vicinity in the general area of Dundalk who would have loved the football they played and the style they played with 
So, you know, I think they're entitled to expect help from, uh, from, from the authorities and not just their own resources, but they've also got to put their own money where their mouth is as well and, and uh, it, not just invest the money in the team and around the team and, and doing the gym is okay. The gym, the gym is useful for the players, but if you're, if you're hoping to have two or three or four or five thousand people at your matches on a reg regular basis, you need to provide modern facilities and suitable facilities. I mean, the facilities for the away supporters in the dark is scandalous. They're standing out in the rain, they're sitting out in the rain up one, one corner of the ground with a, 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 a dirt of facilities. It's, it's kind of, it's, 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 la it's not even last century, two centuries ago stuff, I'd say. And, and, and their own supporters aren't particularly well catered for either. But look, tonight is maybe more, it, it's about they've achieved something that everyone in Irish football will be happy about, that we have an interest in the Europa League group stages for only the tour time that we'll be watching those mm. matches. It's a pity that we won't have supporters in them. It was a big decision for the dog to go and play in the Aviva Stadium tonight. And, the, and it's a pity that there was no one there to to cheer them on and, 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 and to enjoy that occasion. But that's how it is. And it's probably how it's likely how it's going to be in the group stages too. Yeah, you'd have to assume that all their home matches will probably be at the Aviva once again. And we went through some of the teams they could play from even Feyenoord potentially been a pot three team up to the likes of an Arsenal, Tottenham, Leicester City, Celtic Rangers, all in that uh, draw tomorrow as well. How they fare then? It's going to be a cramped end to the League of Ireland season, but like we think of the last time Dundalk qualified for the Europa League and acquitted themselves so well, and it's one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that Stephen Kenny is now the Ireland manager. They beat Maccabee Tel Aviv, they draw with AZ Alkmaar, and they run Zenit very close twice, and in the other two games that they lost, they, they were right there in all of those matches. From what you've seen tonight, and we don't know the draw, you don't sound overly confident that we can get anywhere near to that level again from this current Dundalk? Well, not the team that put out in the field tonight. Mm. Um, I feel the team that played in the field tonight is a long way short of that team I mentioned earlier on when they were at, when they were at their... At their, at their best, which they showed in those group stages. Uh, I mean, I was at all the, those games, bar the one in Israel. Uh, but they, they, um, they had, I, I think, individually and collectively, were a better side then. I mean, you look at the position in the league table at the moment, and you're, you've mentioned that it'll be a very prompt program towards the end of the season and the group stages start. I think they showed last last weekend against Shamrock Rovers what their interest was in the league. Their interest in the league was that they they didn't they didn't pick the team to play against Shamrock Rovers in in what was a very important game for Shamrock Rovers and some of the other teams in the league in relation to their finish, finishing positions and making the top four and so on. I think their ambition now is just to make the top four and to probably try to get some points in the group stages. And make some money from those from the points garnered, which you know, maybe, maybe maybe that's maybe that's the right approach. Yeah. But you would think you would like to think that they would be competitive in every game they play in the league. Also, I mean, in my opinion, the league game in Shamrock Rovers should have been postponed the other night. It shouldn't have been shouldn't have been played. The dog should have been given the opportunity to rest the players fully for tonight's game. Now, as it happened, they just decided to rest the players. Anyway, by not playing them, but it meant they put out what was more or less the second team against Shamrock Rovers in the league. Now, was that fair to the other sides in the table who are in competition against each other for places near the top and places near the bottom? I didn't think so, but the answer was to call the game off. Yeah, well, that's you're right. Like that's not the dog's fault. They have to prioritise no, yeah, tonight's match. Sure. For sure. No, no, it wasn't. And, and um, I, I think the game should have been off. But look, at, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they combine the two, uh, playing the group mm. games and playing, the, playing the, uh, the group games in the Europa League and the remaining games in the, in the uh, League of Ireland. Yeah, uh, Filippo Giovanioli, their manager, has just been in his press conference saying he wasn't happy with the performance tonight either, but obviously they got the job done. And do we have to take that into account with tonight's performance as well, that this is a huge game still for all of these players? And for once, it's a rarity, a game of this importance for an Irish club. They are overwhelming favourites to go and win it. So there was a lot of pressure on the players tonight. Maybe that was a factor as well? 
Yeah, I, I think in the first half there was signs of nervousness. It certainly wasn't a sign of experience and confidence in the first half. There was a lot of misplaced passes and a bit of ginging up the pitch at times. It wasn't a composure that I, I would have associated with the dog. But I think Chris Shields makes a big, has a big influence on that. I mean, he, you know, it, it, it might sound slightly odd to say one player should make a big difference, but he has been such a key man for them over the years in terms of that holding position, controlling the tempo of the game, ensuring that there's players around them to pass the ball to and build up the play. And, um, uh, I, I I think they they missed them badly, but you know I look, I look at the, uh, at yeah, I don't know how, how far away uh, Sean Gannon. I mean why 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 didn't why didn't play tonight? Uh, De Massey had an operation. Obviously he's not available. I mean they're such key players mm. in the, the dog style over the years. But at, look at the manager and everyone else around it would just be delighted that they made it and they got through. I'm being a little bit. I'm looking at it in the bigger picture and saying. Are they likely to get points in the group stages? You know, against better teams that, like the Faroes League, would be only I think maybe two teams lower ranked than the Faroes League in the whole whole of Europe. KL Claxwick, it's a very, it's a remote place in the Faroe Islands. It's by my reckoning, when I was driving there, it used to be it was about five islands away. You know, and even to get players to go there. From the Tarshaven, well, they would have had to think about it unless Cowie were paying a lot more than the clubs in the in um, Tarshaven, like uh, Habe and B26. So, you know, they, 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 they weren't, they beat uh, Dynamo to 6 1. We mm. saw how they did it, beat them with a lot of set pieces, balls and balls. And you could see tonight how they could make goals and create goals, but you know, quite limited defensively and were found out. But uh, uh, look, I'm delighted for the dog. I'm. I feel sorry for Vinny Pear tonight that he wasn't involved in it. Yeah. I think he was very, very harshly treated. Um. And you know some of the suggestions that were being made to him, as I understand it, in advance of some of the games prior to them removing him, were outlandish and ridiculous. And there were obviously the the opinions of of non football people that hadn't a clue what they were talking about. So they dispensed with him on the basis of a European defeat. And the ball has bounced for them well since then. They've got handy, handy, uh, handy opposition, and they've come through it. And they're in the group stages. And we look forward to seeing the draw tomorrow, and the dogs big matches in the Europa League uh, knockout st- or group stages. Yeah, we'll keep a very close eye on that. I can't believe you didn't back up your line. You were saying at the weekend that Claxvik was essentially the cork of the Faroe Islands. That they fancied themselves I, a little. No, bit. What, what I'd say to you was. Claxvik is the fish capital of Europe now. The okay. fish factories in Claxvik are booming and it's, quite, it's going really well up there at the moment. And obviously the team win the league last year. They're a few points off Hobe, as they're called, HB, at the moment. And they may not win the league again this year. But, um, you know, they've, they've, like they were down the second division a few years ago. So they've come back very well. And Mitchell Thomason is a very, very good coach, a good manager, and he, he got the best out of what he had tonight. They just hadn't got enough. Um, but it, like it's a small place, it's a very small, it's a, a very small group to pick from. Interesting that they had a few foreign players in the squad tonight, but not many of them in the starting team. The big Norwegian, uh, I think that was about Pavlovich, the centre half as well. That was about it. You've been back to the Faroe Islands lately? No. Last time I was there was when the uh, Trapatoni's team played there. Okay. I was there, yeah. Uh, just like I'd, li- I'd like, I'd like to go back. It's, we'd like to go anywhere. Like- we'd like to go anywhere right now, Brian. Pardon, it won't be going now soon. That's for sure. No, we can't go anywhere now. Jeez, it- dogs can't go anywhere. Even an L six a.m. flight to go to watch Southampton against Burnley or something, we take it on a Sunday morning at this stage. <laughs> for sure, we, we wouldn't would. even complain sure about it. Would. Uh, not ju- at all. Just a couple of results. Uh, Arsenal have beaten Liverpool on penalties uh, in the Carabao Cup in the last couple of minutes. Finished scoreless after 90 minutes. Harry Wilson missed the crucial penalty for Liverpool. Joe Willock put Arsenal through to the draw, which takes place shortly for the quarter final. Stoke and Brentford also through today. And in the Europa League, so with Dundalk, we know through. Celtic beat Sarajevo 1 0. Rangers beat Galatasaray 2 1. And Spurs, 7-2 winners against Maccabee Haifa. Three of them for Harry Kane, two of them for Giovanni Lo Celso, one for Lucas Moura, and one a penalty kick in the final minute for one Delhi Alley, uh, who came off the bench for Tottenham in that one. So they're in that draw as well tomorrow. Uh, 
you're going to be doing Spurs on Sunday, Brian, in one of our live match commentaries against Manchester United. We've seen quite a bit of them already in our live commentary games here and off the ball so far this season. Is it slowly but surely coming together for Mourinho? They were obviously impressive and should have won well at the weekend until the controversy against Newcastle. Well, they got, well, you know, that was a, was a bit of a disaster for them, losing the penalty late on. They should have been out of sight and won the game well. Newcastle were were, were poor on the day, unadventurous and created nothing until they put Andy Carroll on and bashed a few balls forward. Andy appealed for a couple of penalties before they got the one they eventually got. But, you know, that's the problem when you're only leading one nothing. And we, we, we talked about that during the commentary, night. And so um, I think overall... A disappointing start to, to only have four points. Um, is it coming together for them? I don't know. They be they, again. You you look at the team you put out tonight. You put out a very strong team tonight. Nearly, I'd say nearly as first eleven from what I remember when I had a quick glance at the side during the Dundalk game. That looked like it was nearly his best team. So you know that's how seriously he was taking that match to get into the mm. uh, your your open league because he knows that's that's. Um, that's the route to the Champions League next year, uh, as other teams have treated it in recent years. Manchester United and Arsenal have had it. It was that route to have a go to try and get in. Um, so I think the win on Tuesday was was important on penalties against Chelsea. That keeps them going. In, so it keeps them going in two cup competitions. Realistically, in the league, it's hard to see them having enough quality. I think they'll struggle to make the top four. And I think this is an insurance that he's, he's doing his best yeah. in the cup camp, putting out red strong teams. That's a big game on Sunday now. If there's a winner for whichever team loses, it's suddenly a really poor start to the season. Yeah, for sure, because Manchester United it's been very mixed start as well. A lot of criticism. Um, the Crystal Palace defeat was was a was a big downer for them that they were beaten so convincingly. Um, yeah, I think they, they they need Manchester United. I think needed even more than Spurs because the expectancy level is so much so much higher on them, so much more pressure on Solskjaer. Uh, Marino will get away with it if, if Spurs aren't doing as well. He'll talk himself. He'll talk himself through it. I think I'm with no supporters in the ground. He can he can play whatever way he likes. In fairness, to them, they took the game to yeah. Newcastle Sunday and, and and played well and and it was good play. And Hoiberg looked like he was finding a bit of form. The combination in general looked well. Uh, Bergwin when he came on from Son wasn't as good as Son, but Son and Kane were really in form. Lucas Moura in the right. Um, you know, I'd be doubtful about the midfield. I'd be yeah. doubtful about. Uh, about uh, uh, Winks uh, uh, and uh, Highball that they're the top top quality. Matt Doherty is a bit to do as a fullback and uh, as a defensive on the defensive side of his game. And we just wait and see how Re Regalon does when he gets in. If he gets in ahead yeah. of Davies, oh, Davies played well at the weekend. Brian, great stuff as always. We're out of time. Thanks a million for taking the call. Okay, no problem, Nathan. See you at the weekend. Okay. Yeah. Brian, back on Sunday for that commentary of Manchester United against Spurs. We got Arsenal, Sheffield United from two. Uh,